Now, I already had told you earlier that I can understand your physical strength only from the standpoint of my physical body. If my body comes in contact with your body, I understand that you are an unnecessarily an iron man, that I should not play with you. You could gather me and squeeze me like a housefly. I know your strength. Similarly, I appreciate and come to appreciate your emotional sensitivity and beauty only when my mind comes to comprehend your mind. Your poetry, your sense of beauty, your sense of art, all your sensitive literature, I can understand only when my mind comes in contact. Similarly, I can understand your genius or your intellectual accomplishment only when my intellect comes in contact with your intellect. This Atman, the Self, the spiritual center in you can be contacted only from the balcony of my spiritual nature. When I have transcended the BMI to the extent I know that state, to that extent, I can recognize its play everywhere. From that dream state alone, the dream world can be experienced. From the waking state alone, your waking world can be experienced. From the deep sleep state alone, the sleep, the peace and tranquility of sleep can be experienced. Thus, deep sleeper cannot experience dream. The dreamer cannot experience the waking. The waker has no experience of the dream or the deep sleep. Hey. So the physical, mental and intellectual personality experiences, as all of us are, the familiar world of objects, emotions and thoughts only. But those of us, whoever he be, he who have, reach that one state. From there he can experience that all these names and forms are wobbling in that one infinite mass of consciousness. Who is the noblest of among those who have reached the highest? Really speaking, there is no there is no comparison. But Krishna's opinion is an individual who has raised there and start feeling the throbs of joys and sorrows of the world as his own and rushes out into the world to serve this society. Not a one who just remains in the security of the monastery or in the caves of the Himalayas afraid to come to the downtown because they are afraid that I may get again caught up in the web of samsara and the attachments attractions of the world outside he is not the highest <laughs> something like my wife is like that I have taught her driving she drives beautifully in the open freeway but the moment she sees ten people there, a town or a city, she stops. And she says, I can't. You drive. So wherever there is crowd in the road, she has no control. She doesn't know how to safely go through it. But when there is nobody in front of it, ha <laughs> ha! She can close her eyes and go. Because there is nobody there. That is not driving. You must be able to drive even in Indian roads. <laughs> Where with the bonnet you have to move people and then you thread through them. As the thread goes through the 
are you the hero? Then you say that, ha, huh, he knows driving. Even Americans who are born in the car, grew up in the car, living in the car, when they come to India and say that now you drive. <laughs> Ask me anything else but not driving in India. Why? Because we don't know what will happen on the road anywhere. Not in the next turn, anywhere. There will be animals and cattle. There will be wild animals and tamed animals. Human beings strutting from one end to the other because they know that it is their country and they have got the freedom of movement. <laughs> other cars want to just overtake you, it doesn't matter through your right or your left. <laughs> there are bullock cars there, there are all kinds of vehicles from the 12th century onward <laughs> are all maintained there. And the roads are made in the 17th century. <laughs> so they are narrow. There you are. Drive. You can't. Because you don't know how to. You have not mastered the driving. The only a taxi driver of Calcutta is the greatest driver in the world. He doesn't need space. <laughs> now, therefore, the man of realization, the highest is only those who, having realized it and started feeling that the whole world is his own body, total identification with the joys and sorrows of everyone, who comes into the world to serve the world. I consider them as the noblest of all Mahatmas or all great men of realizing.